So tonight, I want you to picture the scene as I take you to a post midterms future. It's January the 6th, 2025. And by now, you know what that means. It's the date legally mandated by the Electoral Vote Act and codified by 3 U.S.C. 15 for Congress to be in session to count the Electoral College votes for President of the United States, something that used to happen as a matter of course in this country, a rubber stamp, essentially, what basketball players would call a layup, golfers would call a gimme, and texters would call NBD. No big deal. On January the 6th, 2025, as the 119th Congress is meeting, Four years on from a violent insurrection, I want you to imagine that Republicans now control both the House and the Senate, having taken control of both chambers in the red wave of November 2022 and having easily kept hold of them in November 2024. It isn't too difficult to envision, is it? In the presidential election that same month, Joe Biden faced off against Donald Trump again and Biden triumphed again, winning the popular vote by several million and winning the Electoral College as well by a healthy margin again. But now, in January 2025, and in the two months since Biden's re-election victory, there's been chaos in key swing states. In Pennsylvania, where Biden won again, Republican Governor Doug Mastriano, yes, he was elected in 2022, the guy who was at the Capitol on January the 6th, 2021, outside the Capitol. Mastriano has rejected Biden's win in Pennsylvania, claiming without evidence massive election fraud and signed off on his own slate of pro-Trump electors to go to D.C. instead on 1-6. Meanwhile, in Michigan, Republican Governor Tudor Dixon and Republican Secretary of State Christina Caramo, both of whom denied the results of the 2020 presidential election, but were still elected to office back in those 2022 midterms. They've done the same, rejecting the will of Michiganders and sending a pro-Trump slate of electors to D.C. In Wisconsin, Tim Michaels, elected governor in 2022, after he apparently attended the Glenn Youngkin Academy for how to become a non-threatening, vest-wearing Republican candidate. Michaels, in 2025, has refused to certify a win for Biden and has sent a pro-Trump slate to D.C. as well. The same Michaels, who prior to his victory in 2022, said in this recording released by the Republican Accountability Project, well, he said the quiet part out loud, didn't he? Republicans will never lose another election in Wisconsin after I'm elected governor. Yeah. 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 So to repeat, imagine it's January 6, 2025, and Biden has lost his electoral college votes from Michigan, from Wisconsin, from Pennsylvania. And the result is now shockingly... 269 votes for Biden and 269 for Trump in the Electoral College. It's a tie, a dead heat. And under the 12th Amendment, it goes to the House of Representatives, where the Republicans control a majority of House delegations, and they get to pick the president. So Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy and his gang vote to return Trump to the White House. It doesn't matter that Joe Biden, the Democrat, won both the popular vote and the Electoral College vote, both by comfortable margins. False claims of election fraud pushed by election-denying Republican governors and secretaries of state put Trump back in the Oval Office. All because of what happens at the ballot box this coming Tuesday in the 2022 midterm elections. You might say the scenario I've outlined is not going to happen. The House has chosen a president only once since the 12th Amendment was passed in 1824. And even if the Republicans take the House and Senate on Tuesday, even if Doug Mastriano and Tim Michaels and Tudor Dixon take the governor's mansions this coming week, the Electoral Count Reform Act, the ECRA, is going to pass in the Senate in the coming months during the lame duck session. It has 15 Republican co-sponsors. It can overcome the Senate filibuster. And that act, say its advocates, could prevent governors from blocking the will of the people in their states and sending their own hand-picked slates of electors to D.C. It sets up a three-person panel of federal judges who can directly appeal decisions by governors to the Supreme Court. Yes, the Supreme Court, with six conservative justices on it three of whom were on the Bush team in 2000, when the then Supreme Court handed the presidency to W, and three of whom are, of course, Trump appointees. But look, let's assume the Electoral Count Reform Act becomes law in the coming months, and let's assume the Supreme Court prevents a Governor Mastriano or a Governor Michaels from ignoring the will of Pennsylvanians or Wisconsinites. Two big assumptions. We're still not out of the woods. The results of these elections on Tuesday could still determine the outcome of the 2024 presidential election and the future, the very survival of American democracy. How? Simple. 
on January the 6th, 2021, only hours after yelling at Trump on the phone that the insurrectionists were trying to effing kill him, Kevin McCarthy and 138 other GOP members of the House voted to overturn the election. McCarthy was now carrying on as if Trump had done nothing wrong that day, and he voted to give him another four years in the White House. It didn't work then because the Republicans were the minority in 2021. This Tuesday, if the vote goes their way, they become the majority in the House in the next Congress, a majority they would almost certainly hold on to in November 2024. And if those Republicans, as a minority in the House, were willing to try and overturn the election results in Arizona and Pennsylvania on January the 6th, 2021, you think they're not going to try and do it if they're the majority come January the 6th, 2025, when McCarthy has the Speaker's gavel in his hand? Really? You think come January 2025, a Republican-controlled Senate that contains a whole new cast of GOP characters like Blake Masters, Herschel Walker, J.D. Vance, Dan Baldock, Mehmet Oz, election deniers and Trump loyalists, it isn't going to consider overturning a Joe Biden victory in a swing state where the Republican governor is screaming fraud? Seriously? I can guarantee you Joe Biden didn't get 50 million people vote for him, but yet people think that he's won this election. I signed a letter with 120 other generals and admirals saying that Trump won the election, and damn it, I stand by my election. Yes or no, though, simply, do you feel the election was stolen? Yeah, I, I do. And look, this picture I am painting for you isn't hyperbole or fiction or fantasy. It could happen. It is possible. Unlikely, yes, but far from impossible or implausible, sadly. Not based on what we've seen in recent years and, more importantly, recent weeks. It's why so many of us are saying that Tuesday could be the last time you vote in a free and fair election in the United States. The last time your vote actually matters and is respected. The 2022 midterms could determine not just the makeup of the next Congress and the occupants of governor's mansions across the country, but also the winner of the 2024 presidential election Elections since the events of January 6th, when the armed and angry mob stormed the U.S. Capitol. There are candidates running for every level of office in America, for governor, Congress, attorney general, secretary of state, who won't commit, they will not commit to accepting the results of election that they're running in. It's unprecedented. It's unlawful. And it's un-American. I've said before, you can't love your country only when you win. If Republican election deniers at the state and federal levels win enough seats, seize enough crucial posts, whether it's governor of Michigan or speaker of the House in Washington, D.C., they will have the power to install a president, not elect a president, install a president in January 2025. And that person's name will almost certainly be Donald J. Trump.